The Holloway Bioscience Research Facility was this year, as in October 21. Spooky occurrence in game for Elite Dangerous. This was revealed during a Galnet article in late October, just before Halloween, with the relevant section stating, During the creation of the Colonia Bridge, which sees a load of fleet carriers put between here and Colonia, the crew aboard the stationary megaship Memories of Orsrati in the Snake Sector OD, Dash S B4-2 system reported an unusual incident. A distorted transmission that could have been an SOS was detected on long-range sensors. Although they were unable to triangulate its source, the signal strength suggested a point of origin within the range of around 50 light years. This led to a surge. People going out there scanning bases, and people like Cannon found it within about an hour. And like a pack of hungry animals, we all rushed out to go and take a look at it. It's the Snake Sector GW-WC1-1 on planet AB5B. Now you scan the planet with a detailed surface scanner. Once you've done that, it'll reveal the location of Holloway Bioscience Research Facility. Quite simple, really. Um, but you have to get in there, do a bit of scanning as well. Now there are four uplinks that reveal the story of the base. And again, Karen's done a really good job of voice acting this, as there's no voice acting in-game. Now the destination system, the Snake Sector GW-WC1-1, and that planet AB5B is about 30 light years away from where the Colonia Bridge megaship was actually moored. So it's not too far of a jump to get yourself over there and start looking through this mystery. I've included some of the logs, all of the logs as well, and how to find them in this video. So it is a case of spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. I'm gonna be going through them, showing you where to get them, and reading them out. When I visited the base, it was in the light side of the planet. Now, which is great because you probably wouldn't have the same sort of effect if this was all dark. Standard base affair, you know, there was no additional things there that showed a sign of a fight or any disruption. Standard plant and drop base. Having a good look around, there's also materials to pick up. And, you know, there's also a beacon to scan as well from additional information. Now there are four, count them four, uplinks that you can scan to reveal the story. Plus some other items as well that when you scan the upload, the upload will reveal a few other items, but nothing too drastic. This story I thought was quite a good story. I found that it channeled aliens quite a bit, you know, aliens too. There was definitely a bit of channeling of that going on. And if you're in the mood for a bit of exploration, there's a couple of items around the site as well, which you can hop around in your Artemis suit, should you have Odyssey. So let's get on with not only finding where these logs are, but also a little bit of narration. So here we go. Log one, Captain Sarah Sterling, 1800 hours. This is definitely one for the Escalibur Troop Hall of Fame, if we had one. The Holloway Bioscience Institute said they'd lost contact with one of their labs. They hired us to investigate and evacuate the staff if necessary. Well, there's no doubt the staff are dead, but we have no idea what happened. We found some empty clothing and suits stained with frozen blood. The base has been without power for weeks, but there are no bodies, no signs that they left the settlement either. It's possible, and then she's interrupted by Corporal Samuel Tholani, not just two minutes later. Captain, this is Tholani. Thought you'd like to know the power cores is online. Coolant systems must have been faulty because the base techs rigged some geothermal conduits to pump the waste heat underground. But I've got everything reactivated, so all systems are back online. Captain Sarah Sterling replies, Great work, Corporal. Keep me informed. Sterling out. Okay, that's some good news. I've got most of the team searching for clues and Lieutenant McKellar is downloading their data files. So hopefully, well soon, 
Wait, I hear gunfire. Sergeant Gerard, come in. Gerard, report. And Gerard does respond. Captain, stand by. I'm entering the engineering block now. Roth, Buckley, cease firing. What are you? Oh my God. And then Private Julianne Roth, one of the team, says, They're coming out of the floor. What the hell are they? Buckley, get back. Buckley says, Get them off me. Get them off me. And then that particular first log ends. Mission log two, about an hour later. Captain Sarah Sterling says, We're in trouble. Serious trouble. These things have come out of nowhere and are swarming through the base. Tennyson, Buckley, Webster are dead. Patel and Cook too, I think. They came crawling up through the floor grates in the engineering block. Hundreds of them all at once. I've never seen anything like them before. Similar to spiders, but with too many legs. Completely white in colour. Each one's about the size of a fist with a round mouth like a lamprey. And then they move like lightning. I ordered my people to wipe them out, but there's just too many of them. So now we're... and it breaks off. Thomas Gerard comes in then. Captain, we've sealed the bulkheads in section three, but they've got past them. They're spilling out of the air vents and are on top of us. Sterling replies, Sergeant, pull back to the control center now. Do you read me? There's a transcription error. Garbled message. Someone shouts for Sarge. They say it's too late. He's covered in them. He's finished. Move, move, move. So much does this track Aliens 2 and the first encounter with, you know, the Xenomorphs. Then they say, Gerard's down, dead. How can Gerard be dead? He was my first recruit. When? I needed to get us out of here. This is Captain Sterling to the Escalibur. Come in. Emergency code Amiga. Bring the ship down immediately for full extraction. Escalibur, respond. And then a corporal responds. There's one on my leg. I can't see it. And then Julianne Roth says, I got it. It's gone. It's on me, Sam. I got you. Let's go. And then Sterling, still trying to contact the ship, replies, Escalibur, this is Code Omega. Come in. I don't understand. Comms are open. Why aren't they responding? Transponder signal is... No signal. The ship's not there. What's happened to them? What the hell's going on? And then you've got Log 3. Sterling again. This is it nine minutes past midnight. We've gathered in the control center, those who are left. Half of my team is gone. The whole base is in darkness, apart from our suit lights and the power center has been shut down. That's what caused those things to appear in the first place. McKellar downloaded the research team's final report made after the first attack. Their xenologists believe the creatures come from an enclosed subterranean ecosystem over a kilometer below the moon's surface. It's likely they see infrared, like thermal imaging, when they hunt on heat, like heat-producing animals. So the waste heat being pumped underground was a massive attraction to them, melting the subsurface ice and allowing them to crawl up the pipes. Then Corporal Samuel Thalani says, Captain, I'm at the maintenance hatch four. We've finished blocking the vents, but Jules hasn't returned. I'm going back out to find her. Sterling responds, hold your position. If that last doorway isn't sealed, they'll be able to get in. She calls out for Roth. Roth doesn't respond. Sterling orders everything to be sealed. Then they say there's nothing that you can do but wait. Without the power center's heat, we're hoping that the things will retreat back underground and leave us alone. I can hear them out there in the dark, scuttling along the floors and walls, trying to find some crack to crawl through and get to us. If they do, well, I've still got a fully charged cell on my carbine. That should be enough for everyone who's left. I won't them let them, I won't let them go out like the others. Then the final log is then half past four in the morning. So it's gone on about 10 hours. It worked. It took a couple of hours, but the creatures are gone. McKellar confirmed that the geothermal pipes have refrozen, which should stop them climbing back up again. On my orders, he blasted the power center's controls, so they're stuck underground forever. Now all we have to do is worry about asphyxiation. With no juice for environmental systems, the air won't last long. Our suits will give us a few more hours, but since our ship has vanished, and where has that ship gone? We're trapped down here. I've sent a message on the emergency beacon, but we're hundreds of light years away from any, and then someone interrupts her again, 
and says, Sir, Corporal Fulani definitely isn't within the perimeter. He must have sealed the hatch from the other side. I think he must have been looking for jewels. They mean Private Roth. They were kind of close. Slipping the sausage, no doubt. Captain Sarah Sterling then says, Acknowledged. Add his name to the list of the dead, please. Stirling out. I didn't know about Fulani and Roth. What sort of a commander is she? Should I have known? Suppose it doesn't matter now. And then they state that there's a ship above us in low orbit, a mega ship. Sterling says, thank God, it must have picked up our beacon. Can you identify it? It's then identified as, and they say, scanning now, it's a strange one. Looks like it might be a dredger clan. There are tribal markings all over it. I can just about make out the name on its hull. The Phagos. I think it says, a couple of landing craft are headed down. And Sterling says, well, let's have a welcome party ready. Lieutenant Sterling out. So now they said it's Lieutenant Sterling. I thought it was Captain Sterling. Bit of a mistake here, you see? Captain Sterling or Lieutenant Sterling? Well, some good luck at least. I'm sure these scavengers will want payment for rescuing us, but be worth every credit. And it's better than being eaten alive. Now, the Phallos clan has been mentioned on Elite Dangerous and on Galnet as well. So the Dredger Cans seem to be a rising force. And there's all this stuff that says a few have eaten darker reputations and being told nightmare stories where they say the Phagos will take you away in your sleep and eat you up. So what happened to that team? What happened to the ship? Why are we only finding this out now? So it does prove to say that the Dredger clans are going to be a force to be reckoned with within the Elite Dangerous universe. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching. See you soon.